Um, I'm very nervous about the future of the Cincinnati Reds when it comes to L.A. De La Cruz. So many people are worried about whether they can afford to pay him or not. That's great. The Reds, if they're desperate enough, they're going to pay him. I care about what they do once they pay him. Are they going to, once they pay him, do what they did with Joey Votto, where they gave him the money and then said, all right, well, hopefully the prospects coming up through the system can be good enough to, we can win with. Because we don't, we're poor. We don't have any money. And if we thought the organization went broke after paying Votto, what do you think they're going to do when it, it's a big-time contract for L.A. De La Cruz? I want L.A. and Cincy for a long, long time. But I don't want L.A. and Cincy for a long, long time of being a face of a, well, bottom feeder franchise. I want Elliot, uh, Elliot, sorry. I want Ellie. <laughs> I think Ellie has a responsibility to look at that front office and say, okay, cool. I know you're going to give me my money, but are you going to give me a team to contend with? Because if not, I can get my, I can get my money from any team in major league baseball. I don't need the money. For, it's not like you're the only team that could offer me money. I can get my money anywhere. I need to go somewhere where I can make my money and contend as well. People say, well, that everyone goes to the Dodgers because they have the money. People go to the Dodgers because they can have their money and contend. I think Ellie can get his money in Cincinnati. I don't know if he can con contend, and I think his responsibility is to look at the front office and say, what are you going to do? He needs to put pressure on them. And I, as I stated, Vado didn't do that. And I thought that that was a big-time failure on his part, and I, that's why I got frustrated with him. I'm hoping Ellie doesn't do the same thing. I'm glad you didn't bring up TikTok in that take, though. I, I, I am glad <laughs> you didn't mention that one. Uh, a couple things. Number one, sports, uh, players. The number one thing for every for every athlete now, you're seeing it in college now, I want to get paid. It's about me. I want to get paid. And that's not a bad thing to, to be an advocate for yourself. It's not a bad thing to want as much money for yourself as possible and, and, and hell with anybody else. That's what it is. So when somebody offers you a big contract, you accept it. There's no other strings attached because you're paying me. And I understand it. We aren't the only ones in, in the world that know that in baseball, and it's a, when it's a small market, it's a big market league, and you're a small market team, that it's probably going to be difficult to extend everybody when they just paid you $200 million. They know that. The players know it. The front office knows it. The fans know it. Everybody knows it. So when I'm Joey Votto and somebody's offering me with a $200 million contract, to stay in the city that I've lived in for a couple years, to be with the fans that I like, to, the, to a place that I've called my home, a large sum of money, my first reaction to that isn't going to be, well, you better extend everybody else. It's going to be thank you. dramatic. It's going to be thank you very much, sir. I am now a 200 millionaire because of you. And whatever happens after that, to be quite honest, I don't care. And, and maybe that's the wrong attitude, but that's how it is. That's the reality of the situation. If Trace Fowler tomorrow came, hey, came to me and said, hey, hey Elliot, I'm going to give you a $1 million five-year extension, <laughs> I'm not going to say, hey, you better go pay Jacob and Casey. No, oh, come on. I'm not going to do it <laughs> because he just offered me a million dollars. Come on, dude. And come you guys on. wouldn't either. So it's just, like, it's just one of those things where I don't know what you want this guy to do. I, 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 the same thing with Ellie De La Cruz. If they're going to offer him 11 years, 340, 11, 14 years, 400, Whatever they offer him, his first response, I promise you, will not be, you got to go now sign Matt McClain. If you got to go yeah. now sign TJ wow. Friedel, Spencer Steer, Will <laughs> Be. You got to go sign the rest of them. Because I'm not going to sign your major contract unless you pay everybody, every one of my teammates, like it's some sort of charity. And I'm not saying that's what it is, but I'm saying that's essentially what you'd be arguing is I'm a team guy. I'm a team first guy. I'm a rah rah guy. And I want these guys to know I've got their back, even though I'm about to sign for $390 million. <laughs> I want them to get their portion of the, of the change, too. There isn't that portion of the change to go around once that contract is out there. And Joey Votto, once you sign the contract, you can't go in five years later and say, you know what? I don't want you. I want to, I want to be but, traded. But, but he can. I'm going to leave. I'm going to protest. He signed the contract. Right. But, but, he, but he can. He has a no-trade clause, which means he technically can go in there and say, get me out of here. Here's the teams I want to go to. If he did that, that would be disgusting and terrible. But you that's signed what the athletes in all... Well, when have we become goody-goody about I hated contracts? Trey Hendrickson for demanding a trade when he signed a contract a year ago. But, like, that's, but that's just how sports operate. But the one thing about those athletes, I appreciate... Like, they want to win. If it's all money based, I can't. I, I'm not gonna sit there and lose sleep over that. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be irritated with that. But like, yeah. when a guy like 
you know, people say, oh, no one wants to go to Cleveland. Well, Cleveland will pay you a lot of money. Well, they, they're not going to go there. They're not going to win anything. We say that all the time about teams, about players. But, yeah, but uh, Jimmy? I think one I, – I see where you're coming from because it becomes a legit concern when there are teams like the Dodgers and the Yankees who will offer Ellie a similar contract, and those are teams that will go out and, and sign players and be able to promise Ellie – we're going to surround you with these guys to win. And so I understand where you're coming from on that front, especially with the Dodgers, whose shortstop right now is, I mean, he's hurt, but Mookie Betts, who was a former World Series champion in right field. So they could come to Ellie and say, hey, we want you to play shortstop for us. We'll offer you the same, if not more, than whatever the Reds are offering you. And that's definitely going to be a draw for Ellie because he can get all this money, live in L.A., play for a winning team. And... I don't worry that the Reds are going to offer Ellie the money. I think it's just, like, I, I understand what, what you're saying. They need to kind of make it known to him that they're going to commit to surrounding him with winning players. It's, with, it's because in baseball, teams can just pay, pay, pay to win. And if Ellie wants the best chance to win, he should not sign it. Right. 100%. Period. Done. Like, if, right. he's, if he, the main thing on his docket is that he wants to win a World Series, he is going somewhere else. But don't you want that competitive drive in your athletes, though? I hope that's not what he wants, because if that's the one thing he wants, he's never playing for the Reds and, after this contract. And that's my issue with this whole argument, is if, if, if every athlete had that mentality, the Reds wouldn't exist. Right. Nobody would sign with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nobody would sign with the Cleveland Guardians, the Cincinnati Reds, the Kansas City Royals, the Minnesota Twins. You'd eliminate half your league because they only want to win and they only want to get paid a lot of money. And that only happens in when you're in Los Angeles or New York. Well, then I won't like L.A. De La Cruz if he doesn't care about winning. I, won't, I don't like any athlete but that doesn't it, care but, about winning. But, that's, but that's, where, that's where I disagree. Yeah. You can care about winning... And while How? also not expecting a small market team to hand out $200 million contracts I watch, like they're candy. I watch the NBA and the NFL guys who get their money and want out because they're tired of not winning. I respect the hell out of those guys. Those guys, are the, they have that killer competitive drive. I, as a fan, I want my team to win and I want my athletes to do everything that they can to win. I, the fact that we are sitting here actually defending the mindset that, well, I'm going to support a guy that just wants paid and doesn't want to win, that just sounds so crazy to me. That just sounds absolutely insane. Casey? I mean, I, I don't disagree with your concept of, like, I want my players to have a, a winning mentality. I want L.A. De La Cruz to say to the front office, like, I want to win a World Series with you guys. Help me. Right, I want that to happen, but I'm not blaming Ellie De La Cruz for the position that the, the small market franchise that the Reds are in. Like, the only way that it's going to work, and we've seen the recipe already, it's going to be with developing their players. And maybe the the issue isn't necessarily about payment, but about being aggressive, trade deadlines and things like that, and selling those players so then you can build a better tomorrow. I mean, that's. That's the only way that they can go about this. And I, you're just not going to be able to convince me that it's on Ellie De La Cruz to convince the front office to spend money, the money that they don't have, right? Like, they just can't go out and get Mookie Betts or Shoei or whoever they want. Once they sign Ellie, that's their guy. They got to find other ways to get B-level players to fill in the rest of the spots in the, on the franchise and – Build it up that way. Build up the floor, right? That's that's my thoughts on this. I mean, I, I just can't I can't blame Ellie for for the future of this franchise. If he signs a three hundred and fifty million dollar contract here, yeah. he understands when that pen hits paper that there's not gonna be big contracts around him. Everybody knows that. Right. Everybody that's 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 very then clear why, to everyone. Then why do we want the Reds to sign him then? Because I think he's one of the best players I've ever seen. So we just baseball. want to go to the ballpark to watch a good player, not watch yes. a winning team. I'm completely fine with that. And I I'm think not, Ellie well, the, gives whoa, the team whoa, the best what? chance to win. <laughs> Ellie gives the team the best chance to win. He, what they you, did with Joey Votto is not, fine with me. You're not, fi you're not, fi you're not fine with, with losing. <laughs> his, his criteria for a losing team, I'm fine with. Paying Ellie and putting prospects around him that you think give a team the chance to win. What he's Look calling how miserable losing we are with this team, though. Like, like this would be this all the time. Like this would be us all the time talking about this team. I think Ellie's Ellie with supplemental pieces run. around him at 26 is a team that's good enough to win. That's yeah. the difference. Is you think it requires other big contracts to win? No, it's it's about 
making the moves to win. And I don't want to hear my, my general manager at the deadline saying, well, we didn't want to blow up this team and ruin their chances of the second half when you didn't do a damn thing to help this team at all in the second half. Like, and that's an isolated thing. Like, I think one isolated trade deadline wouldn't piss him off, but I think it's when you start looking at the totality of it. When Vado looks back at his time there, he's going to look back and say, what the hell did they do to try to con consent while I was there? Like, and I think that, that that should matter. That matters in the NBA. That ma If Joe Burrow, if the Cincinnati Bengals, by the way, just let Jamar go and they don't go sign any key pieces in free agency or like expensive, like legitimate talent, they just keep, well, we're just going to keep drafting your weapons. We'll just keep, eventually Joe Burrow, if he feels he can't win in Cincinnati, he's going to get out of there, right? Like, I don't, I don't care how much money they throw because Joe Burrow can get his money anywhere. I, I, I res like, that's why I respect NFL and NBA players because of that right there. Like, yes, they, can, they want their money and they're going to be selfish when they need to. But at the same time, Jamar Chase, I promise, Joe Burrow leaves Cincinnati and he's not there. J Jamar Chase doesn't just want to be the highest paid wide receiver in football and not contend in Cincinnati. He I mean, you saw the temper tantrums he was throwing the first month of last season when they couldn't get him the football and they weren't winning games. All of a sudden, it's a completely different mindset. I just, I like that competitive drive in my athletes and I just, baseball drives me nuts with that. I'm just hoping Ellie's different from my perspective. I mean, I just, how, I don't see how you can put blame on Ellie on this. this. This is the front, this is a huge front office issue. It's not on Ellie to, to try to convince Who the GM oh, to go sorry. spend money. I mean, I just, if they don't have the money they're not going to spend it. And if they do have the money, they'll, they'll spend it. Like I, that's the way I look at it. And I feel like the best way for them to win is to do what Jacob says, build up your farm system, get a bunch of prospects because we just are a small market team. That's just the nature of the beast. And I, blaming Ellie on any of this just seems very strange to me. Blaming Votto for any of that is very strange to me. You don't think Votto like, could have made a difference going to that front office? Like, what do you want him to do? Job. Say spend more money in the money they don't have? But, like, I don't... It's, but like LeBron, it's not his job to be a GM, but he cares about putting the pieces Baseball in place doesn't have to be a contender. salary cap. It's a completely different thing. Which is all the more reason why you should be in there throwing around your weight. But we don't have the money to throw around our weight. Then the Reds suck ass. Correct. And that's the reality <laughs> then, then, of being a Reds fan. Is, you can't this compete being contractually. A I hate living in Ohio. Go Guardians. At least when they don't spend money, they find ways to win. I mean, my <laughs> God, what are we doing? I, you're not wrong from the front. Like, you're, you're building your whole opinion based on the framework of how you know the team's going to operate. But my thinking is, is when you have a player, a generational player, if there was ever a player that could – bully them into doing different doing things different it is ellie de la cruz when you ask about i'm gonna go to you in a second sorry my bad when you asked when you asked about why is that ellie's job it's not necessarily his job but he has the influence athletes have more influence than ever before ellie can go in there if he said i will sign with you if i know you're going to put pieces around me to contend and then they don't and then he releases that to the media now the reds look like the biggest jokes in the world the athletes have that type of power that's why I appreciated Castellanos when he was burying the Reds organization, saying that the fans. Uh, Castellanos did more to defend us than Votto ever did, and oh. it's true. Castellanos called out the front office for not caring about winning. What did Votto do? TikTok. I mean, come on. Like it is what it is, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, employees can't call out their yeah, bosses. Bottom played her for ten years without a social media presence as well. That's how he makes money. Right. I don't know, like it's the NBA players do it, NFL players do it because they have leverage. If Joey Votto yeah, called out the front office and demanded a trade after signing a ten-year contract with a no-trade clause, the city would hate him. No, I don't think they would. Like, oh, I know they. Anyone would. would. Why? Any fan why of the Reds you, should why would hate you him hate for doing that. Because but I would understand. I'd be like, yeah, I don't blame you, dude. The front office stinks. What are they doing? Just saying, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, it's just frustrating because people know that the L.A. and the Yankees and the Mets and those big market teams are going to come knocking on the door. And I feel, I feel like people are kind of – I've seen it a lot in the chat. They, they say, oh, that's dumb. They haven't won World Series. They just win a lot of games in the regular season. Well, there's something to be said for going and joining a team that has an Aaron Judge, a Juan Soto, or a Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman. It's just – the reality of like being a professional athlete at the end of the day i know he's going to want to get his money but if he's getting this a similar contract offer if, if not more from those bigger market teams why would he stay here that's why the reds have to offer him while they still have control i totally because that's agree. the only that thing have you have over those yeah. teams is getting him more money in these next five years where he's making pennies and so that's the reds only chance they have and mind you i want him to stay here i don't want it to turn into another 
insane super team. Every small market fan yeah. should be rooting for LA to stay. Absolutely. I really want him to stay. I'm getting sick of the big market teams just spending boatloads of money. And the, the Shohei contract this offseason was, was annoying. Like that, yeah. as a baseball fan, that's one of right the after most, bringing uh, in the best pitcher on the market. Right, in now. it's one of the most annoying contracts I've ever seen, and I'm not saying this stuff about LA and all. Oh, he said LA is my city, and I'm just saying that it is a realistic concern that with the guys that the Dodgers have, Mookie Betts is their shortstop. He's one of the best players in baseball. All they got to do is move him back out to right field, because that's where he won a World Series. He was an amazing right fielder. And they can just say, Ellie, look, you can play shortstop for the LA Dodgers. And we'll give you 12 years, 35, 40 million a year, and you can come play shortstop for the Dodgers. What are, gonna talk oh. Where, what are you gonna do? I, I do have one question uh, for you guys, just really quickly about Shoei Otani's deal. We all know the, the framework of it, 2 million for like the next 10 years. And then after that, it's 60 68. plus. Is there any world, any chance at all that if Ellie De La Cruz did care about winning, that we could get a framework very similar to that and the Reds could go spend money? I don't is, that, is that possible I at all? I think that's a once-in-a-lifetime, once once-ever contract framework. And, of course, okay. it's L.A. that gets the break. Right. That's right. what, like, I'm like, you, Shohei could have given that break to a small team, market team. Yeah. And, like, doing that for L.A. was just like, what are we doing? There's that's also the another wrinkle with there. Ellie's career earnings where he owes – a percentage of his career earnings to a scouting company that found him in the Dominican. So right. I do know like that. an agency, like, an agency that, the agent. Right, like, right. So I don't, not, he's a better I don't think he would have incentive to defer if he already owes money to other people. You see what I mean? Yeah. I was just curious because it, that feels like that would be the only way the Reds could be able to do more in free agency besides. Yeah, that would change yeah. everything. I just like the, the those situations are so rare. I just don't see how, like I don't know. And that you're asking so much of Ellie, as well to make that deal, like you said. I don't know. I just it feels weird to be blaming Ellie for this. Yeah, Shohei, Shohei technically owns one fifth of the Dodgers because seven hundred million is a fifth of the Dodgers' evaluation. So <laughs> by the way, I'm not not blaming him for anything. He hasn't done anything yet. It's insane. <laughs> he hasn't done anything you're, yet. You're, you will be blaming him. No, I don't think blaming is what I'm saying. I think I'm. I think you said the word blame. No, I blame Votto. I blame Votto. We got to go. Ellie has got to go to break. Votto had a responsibility to hold his team accountable. He didn't. He made TikToks. That's all he cared about, being funny on TikTok, putting on his little He was on TikTok for a year and a half. Yeah. What else? When the team was He got bored because there was no games to win. So, yeah. Losing mentality. 